This is 1969, number 17. They're looking for inflection points. And that's where the second derivative changes signs. But where do we look for where the second derivative changes signs? That's going to be where the second derivative is zero or does not exist. So it's very similar to relative max or min. To find those points, you find where the first derivative is zero undefined. But for inflection points, you look for where the second derivative is zero undefined. So let's find the derivative, we'll call this f of x. So f prime of x is gonna be 20x cubed minus 5x to the fourth. Then we take the derivative again, 60x squared minus 20x cubed. And we're gonna factor out 20x squared because they both have a 20x squared. That's gonna give me three minus x so if I set these equal to zero, I'm gonna get two answers, x is zero or x is three. So those are the two possible places where the second derivative could change signs. So we're gonna make a little number line table. So I'll do negative one, one and 10. But what I want to know is what happens to the second derivative. Because the justification for a point of inflection is the second derivative changes signs. So I need to see if the second derivative changes signs. So let's plug in negative 1 here and here. Well, that's always positive because you're squaring. But a negative 1 becomes plus 1. So it's a positive times 4. So that's gonna be positive, the second derivative there. Let's plug in one. Three minus one is two, which is positive. That's always positive. So we still have a positive there. Let's plug in 10. Again, that's always positive. Three minus 10 is negative. So a positive times a negative is negative. So the only place where the second derivative change of signs is right here at three. So the answer will be this. Now we don't have to find the y coordinate because there's only one answer with three as the point of inflection. So we don't have to 